Hey everyone, welcome to our new tutorial and today we're going to talk about some of the basic stuff in Magic Cube. We're talking about fade in, fade outs, uh, delay in, delay outs in the queues and also for some of the attributes and we're also, I will also show you uh, the menu which is called default times. Okay, let's start with the basics. So, uh, fade in, fade out. How would you set a fade in on some queue? Let's, let's just create a basic queue. We're going to press locate, time, uh, the color, position, and let's store it as a queue. So, by raising a fader now, we're going to see every, all the fixtures go in a position with the color and intensity in one go. But if we'd like to actually have a bit of a fade on that queue, all we have to do is double click and then there's going to be a fade menu, uh, a fade column. All you'll have to do is type in the time. Let's say four seconds and then you press enter. So now you have four seconds fade time. Let's test it. We we'll select the group and launch the queue again. You're going to see it all starts and within four seconds everything goes to the look that you're supposed to receive. That's very basic <coughs> and most of you know how to do it. But what I found out is, when it comes to the queue stacks and stuff, I've noticed that a lot of people actually don't know how to set fade out time or delay out. Again, delays, delay ins, fade ins, everyone knows. But how to do the fade outs and delay outs, not many knows. Okay, so now I will show you how to do it. So I've created the basic queue stack, two steps. If you've created a two-step uh, two sequence and if you want to convert it into the queue stack, all you have to do is press the queue timing and press yes. So it will make, out of the chase, it will create a queue stack. So we have two steps. So step one and step two. Okay. So what we need is we would like to set some fade in, fade out time. So if you set by default, if you select, say, uh, you select the first step, you tap three seconds and the, 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 the one below is going to be four seconds and you launch it, you're going to see all the attributes are going to be doing everything within the given fade time. So this time, when you only select fade in time, it applies to all attributes at the same time. But if you want to set a bit of complex timing when you would like to have fade in time to be one value and fade out to be a different value because by default as soon as you type in fade in three seconds by default magic you will consider the fade out equals to fade in which means three seconds and four seconds respectively but what if we would like to set separate fade in and fade out time in that case this is what you have to do so if you select your uh, fade in cell what you can do is, if you type a value for the fade in, let's say three seconds, and then you put slash, and now you type the second value, let's say five seconds, and you press enter, you will see now it shows you three and five seconds. In that case, Magic Cube will load in the step in three seconds, and it will load out step in five seconds. So. You can do similar thing to the next queue. You can actually type two slash five, and now you'll have two seconds fade in and five seconds fade out from this step to another one. So this five second, the second, uh, everything after the slash, it's the fade out. Same things you can do with the delay. You can set two seconds fade in, uh, delay in, and three seconds delay out. The same way, two slash three and now you can see you've got complex delay time as well but let's put the put the delay back to zero so all you do is you type zero and enter now what's going to happen is so when you launch it you have fade in three seconds and then as you press the button it goes five seconds fade out and two seconds fade in so it's a seven seconds Okay, and again you press go and it does slowly fade in with the timing. Again, I showed you the global timing for each queue, but then you can also do individual timing per individual attribute 
or individual group of attributes. How to do this? So, as you have the queue selected, you can always press view queue. And now, in the view queue, you will be able to actually set the different timing for the general timing for the in, for the out, and for the uh, fade in time for your all your attributes separately. What it means is you could actually have fade in to be three seconds, but the position you can actually move within seven seconds, color to be moved in say four seconds, and uh, well beam we don't actually need apologies. Okay, so again you can set your complex timing here. So if you come out you will be able to actually see it shows the seven seconds because we've set it there but at the same time if you go into the view queue you will be able to actually see that um, the timing here is actually complex so everything is going to be loaded at a different time so this is applicable for the whole group of uh, attributes. What it means is when we talk about color, you can actually set color four seconds. That means all attributes of color will be listening to four seconds fade in. And then uh, if you want to also set the more individual timing per attribute, you can actually do it by using this menu. Or let me show you another example how you can actually set individual timing per attribute. Again, you can scroll through the steps here and set your general timings separately from attribute to attribute. So this is how you set it for the queue stack. Okay, uh, different uh, different steps. So now let me change the page and I have created another playback where I do following. So when I launch my playback, you could see the fixtures move in by tilt first, and then they slowly move, uh, go out in the pan, and only after the, it reaches the, the pan position, the, the attribute starts kicking in. What it means is, in this particular queue, I've actually at the set the different fade and delay time per each attribute individually. So how I did it, I'll show you in a second. So what's happened there? If I'll select a queue, uh, a, a group of lights, I will set at full to switch on the dimming only. I will set some position. Okay. And um, I will set, oh, you know what, I'll actually say or out. And then I'll set a color. Let's record that as a queue. So I've recorded this as a standard playback. But what I would like to do is, when I raise my fader, I want fixtures first to go tilt. Pan is waiting. When it reaches the top uh, position, then pan kicks in. And when it reaches all the way, all the position, then only it will start do changing the color. So how can I do this? If you double click on the queue and then you press view queue, you will be able to see this simple view of the timing. But if I click view advanced, you will be able to see all your attributes here. Okay. And they have a different fade times. So let me quickly show you how you can set a different individual fade in and delay time per attribute. And then you can set, uh, then you will be able to set complex looks with a different complex timing easily. So, okay. So first of all, we'd like the fixtures to move in a tilt position. To do this, you select the whole tilt column and it offers you to set your fade tilt time. You can actually set it using the encoder, but we can be a bit more advanced than that. We can actually type in fade time. So I can type four seconds fade in and I press enter. So now tilt has got four seconds fade in. It's, it doesn't need to wait for anything. Now for the pan though, we would like pan to wait those four seconds before it's going to do the four second panning. To do this, you need to set your delay time. But again, we could use the encoder, but we're a bit more advanced than that. So what we can do is we can actually 
type in four seconds so when you look at this column you can always imagine that the first part of the column is actually so you can divide it on two parts the first part of the column is a delay time and then second part of the column is a fade time so if you type 4 slash 4 and then you press enter you're gonna have 4 seconds fade, uh, delay and then you have you can see here as soon as I select it shows me 4 seconds delay on pan and then 4 seconds fade so now we've set pan and tilt which is fine we can obviously test it now so if I drop the position uh, drop the fixtures down let's see how it goes so, so when I raise it it will go all the way up first and then it starts doing the pan the colors go in automatically because I haven't set the fade time on them so let's complete our queue and queue timing sorry you could see so we've set pan and tilt it's all fine let's set some colors as well so what we do is we need to wait now 8 seconds, correct? Because we've got 4 seconds fading on tilt, 4 seconds fading on pan after that. That means altogether is 8 seconds. So what we do is we set cyan to be 4 seconds delay. So you can use this. Or instead we could type in. So we say 4. And then, uh, sorry, not 4. We can say 8 seconds delay slash four seconds fade that means it will wait for eight seconds to to make sure that all the positioning is complete and then it will kick in the color so we're going to select the uh, magenta color and we also set eight slash four and then yellow eight slash four some of you may say why can't you select all three of them but i can i can tell you easily each attribute can be loaded at different time so when even when the colors are loading you can set the different fading for the cyan different fading for the uh, magenta with a different delay on all the attributes so now as we've set it all as we want it we press select the lights locate and let's test it so we'll launch it first it goes all the way up now it goes pan as soon as it reaches the, the points you can see the colors kick in isn't it nice okay cool so I showed you again how to set your basic fade time I showed you how to select uh, set fade in fade out times and now I also showed you how to set individual attribute timing using your view queue and different looks Okay, so the next thing I will show you here is the menu which is called default times. What it is for and how it can be used. So default times allow you to set within your, uh, within your show file the timings that you would like Magic U to automatically apply to your attributes in all the queues that you are creating from that moment. So if you double click on any uh, any uh, queue or queue stack or actually triple click it will give you the queue stack options but at the same time it offers you the access to the menu called view default if you click on this it will allow you to see that you can actually set the different options for the different scenarios whether it's a single queue or whether it's a multi queue but some of the queues are by default they are linked together meaning you can't set if it's a single queue then fade time is going to be two seconds if it's a multi queue it can be, it, it will be uh, more than more steps you actually have to set the same time across single or the multi a multi queue queue stack so what it means is this so if you want that by default your queues from that moment starting will have a, a, a certain fade in fade out time for a, apply to all your queues you can actually set it here okay let's look how it uh, how it can be done let's say we're gonna set that from from now on from any queue I will create I want fade time to be three seconds I want the position to be five seconds I want the color to be four seconds and 
yeah, let's say I'm going to keep it this way. So this is my this are my defaults, and I can press close can, to close that that screen. So from now on, if I'll select my queue uh, uh, group, locate it, I'll set a, a color, I'll set a position, and I will record that as a queue. Now, I will locate it. So now, as soon as I launch my queue, you're going to see by default, it will take X amount of time for the position, X amount of time for the color, X amount of time for the dimming. And you can always check it by double clicking your queue. And then you go to the view queue and you will be able to see that this has all the timing that I've set in the view defaults. But bear in mind, this timing is now are default times for any queue that's been created. Okay, so and from that moment, any queues that are created will come with this timing. So if you want to change the timing, you'll have to go and individually change the, the timing in all your recording, unless you cancel it, of course, and change it in a view default. So again, uh, this timing will not apply to any playbacks that were created before you enter the timing, because this is the new data, new information, and everything will go from that moment uh, with this new timing. Again, hope it was everything was useful and if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Thank you and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.